blessing as able, I invite you to stand. celebration today other than to celebrate that God is watering the earth that indeed needs some watering some softening and I pray that our hearts are softened also with God's love as we worship together blessed be the Holy Trinity one God who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days Amen. dear friends together let us acknowledge our failure to and to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that we have messed up our relationship with you and with us. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you have been made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit.
Let us pray. O oh God, overflowing with mercy and compassion, You lead back to Yourself all those who go astray. Preserve Your people in Your loving care, that we may reject whatever is contrary to You, and may follow all things that sustain our life. In Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our special music. Isn't every day you get to jam with your pastor? <laughs> A few more weary 
The first reading today comes from Exodus chapter 32, beginning at verse 7. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people and how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them. And of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. Word of God, word of life. Please read responsibly with me Psalm 51, beginning with verse 1. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you lie in truth and deeply in me, and you have no wisdom in me. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. The second reading is from 1 Timothy, chapter 1. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me, because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Word of God, word of life. Good morning. Good morning, girls, everyone. Girls Day. There comes Jonah. Here he comes. All right. Well, Jesus once told a story about a woman who had a coin. Okay? She had a coin. Kind of like this. Okay? And she needed that coin because she had like like 10 coins, and she lost one. And that's all she had, okay? That was everything. So how, um, and she was very poor. Well, something happened. She lost this coin. She lost it. She couldn't find it. Have you guys ever lost anything that you couldn't find and you really wanted to find it? 
like maybe a stuffed animal or something. Oh, yeah, that happens when we lose stuff. Yeah. Well, this woman, she felt so bad about her coin that she lost. Because it was, it was very important, as I said. She only had so much, okay? Everywhere this woman looked, she couldn't find it. She looked under her bed. She looked under her rug. She looked in her kitchen and her bedroom. She looked in every pocket of her clothes. She swept her whole house, and she still couldn't find that coin. But all of a sudden, she looked over and saw something shiny, and she found that coin. So she, and once it was lost, then it was found. And she was such a happy person. She was the happiest person that she could be. She was so happy about finding that coin that she called all her neighbors and her friends and anyone who would come and be happy with her, rejoice with her and be happy. That's how happy she was. Because her lost coin was found. Well, the reason Jesus told this story, he told it to some people, because he was really telling it about people. Like this coin was like a person in his story, okay? Because God feels the same way that that woman felt about her coin. He is so happy when all boys and girls come to believe in him. And it makes him happy. He rejoices just like that woman did about her coin. So he loves it when you think about him and believe in him, okay? So every person, every person in here, each and every one of us is very, 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 very important to God. Okay? All right, so let's fold our hands and bow our heads. Dear God, thank you for looking for us and finding us. In Jesus' name. Ready? Amen. Do you guys each want a coin? Does anyone invite you to stand? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. for the Sunday is taken from the 15th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning with verse 1. Glory to you, O Lord. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them a parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost." Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? 
When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of, an of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of our risen Lord. Please be seated. Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus the Christ. I'm going to go off script a little bit here, which we can do. When I was uh, serving at Ohio First Lutheran, we had a screen and I had a PowerPoint. And I had to kind of follow because they had keys when to turn to the next slide. And when I'd go off script, I'd see that person in the balcony turn white, searching. Where is he? Where is he? I'm off topic. <laughs> you heard, this is a review. Did you ever have those in school? A review lesson? How well have you learned? In our first lesson, the people were worshiping a golden calf. And God was mad at their idolatry. And he wanted to wipe them out. Start over again with Moses like he did with Noah and his family. But Moses prayed to God to relent, to not do that. The question, what type of prayer is that? Don't all shout at once. What type of prayer? Remember we had our six prayers, adoration, praise, thanksgiving, intercession, petition, submission. Intercession. Moses prayed to intercede. He prayed for others. We have something called St. Matt's Chat, and I'm reviewing that once a week on Wednesday. We drop, uh, Jim drops a, uh, a new chat, and we are reviewing those uh, prayers, so sounds like we need a little review. So <laughs> go on the internet and listen up. It's only four or five minutes long. In the movie, The Unforgiven, the ruthless but reformed outlaw, William Money, played by Clint Eastwood, holds a loaded shotgun to an equally ruthless and sadistic little Bill, the sheriff, played by Gene Hackman. And Gene, or little Bill, is laying on the floor, wounded. And he looks at Clint and the gun, and he says, I don't deserve to die like this. And Clint Eastwood, with his steely eyes and clenched teeth, says, deserves got nothing to do with it. <laughs> and that was the end of little Bill. Maybe he didn't deserve to die like that, or maybe he did. I don't know. Who knows what we deserve and what we don't deserve. But it's healthier for us, spiritually and emotionally, if we refrain from judging others, whether they deserve good or whether they deserve bad in life. Chapter 15 in Luke contains three similar parables. We read two the sheep, the lost sheep, and the lost coin. The third one that takes up the rest of the chapter is the lost son, the prodigal son. And we didn't read that, but you're all familiar with that. The structure of each of those are the same. Something that was owned or something that belonged to a group was lost. There was a frantic search. It was found 
And the finder, the owner, rejoiced and asked others to join in on the celebration. The setting for these three parables is Jesus and the Pharisees are looking at him and saying, judging him, that Jesus eats with tax collectors and Jesus eats with sinners and probably politicians too. Or is that the same? <laughs> they are judging Jesus and judging the people that he's with, thinking that Jesus is affirming their sins. They think that Jesus says that it's okay to sin. Just go ahead. But in reality, Jesus isn't doing that. Jesus is affirming a sinner's worth as God's precious possession. It's a problem that we have in our time. On one hand, if we don't proclaim and condemn sin, if we talk to sinners, if we smile at them, if we be kind to them, we can be accused of tolerating sin, just like the Pharisees accused Jesus. But if we do take note of the sin, even if we do it in the spirit of love for the good of that person, we are accused of being judgmental. What a dilemma. What's the solution? How can we say sin is bad? That sin is bad for a person, but at the same time show God's grace to all people and affirm their worth. I think the solution starts with being truthful about ourselves first. Though we might not want to admit it, all of us are sinners and have been since birth. None of us, none of us deserve God's good gifts. None of us deserve the most important, the most precious gift, and that's eternal life. But deserves got nothing to do with it. It's about God's love for us, especially his love for those who have gone astray. And it is in that love that God forgives and searches out for the lost. A love that wants to return those lost ones back into the fold, back into the family. God's love is higher. God's love is bigger and God's love is deeper than we can imagine. I looked at how these three parables, the sheep, the coin, and the son, were similar but there's a difference too. There's a difference in the ending. When the lost sheep is found and the lost coin is found, there's a celebration. It assumes or implies that everyone participated, everyone that was invited, felt it was great that that lost thing was found. But in the prodigal son, the one who was lost to his family, to his father, and now has returned, the eldest son refused to join in the celebration of his return. He feels that the father should treat that youngest son like a sinner, like an outcast. But just as a father ran out to greet, to hug the returning son, to welcome him, the father runs to the eldest son to invite him to the celebration, to invite him to be part of the joy and the love. But the eldest son refuses. He refuses to celebrate the return of his lost brother. He finds the father's mercy towards a sinning brother offensive. Is your view of others based on merit? 
how good or how bad they are, how much or how little they sin in comparison to you. Are you ever angry or jealous when certain people, those who don't appear as good as you and don't deserve God's blessings according to your judgment, they end up with more than you get. Does that make you mad? Those who find the mercy of God offensive have a begrudging spirit. And like the eldest son, they exclude themselves from celebrating the goodness of God and thus exclude themselves from participating, from living in grace. After all, that's what makes it grace. God gives it freely to all of us, though we don't deserve it. In God's grace, deserves got nothing to do with it. Let's just admit that we are all in the same boat. We are all sinners. Then let's celebrate the grace, the mercy, and the blessings that God bestows on our brothers and sisters and on us. Let's be like Paul who writes about himself in God's grace to his protege, Timothy, in our second reading. Paul writes, The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the foremost. But I receive mercy for this reason, that in me Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. And then the doxology. To the king of ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Our hymn of the day is number 609, Chief of Sinners, Though I Be. As Abel, I invite you to stand.
God's people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of the earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified by God in the Spirit, he is sent to heaven. And the third day he rose again. He is sent to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last day. Amen. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together in one bread, let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. Your people receive mercy in your grace, overflows in our lives. Fill your church with faith and love, and give understanding hearts to those who work to strengthen our ecumenical and interreligious commitments. Work through the ministry of your people, especially all disciples and congregations throughout the world in the ELCA, Alari Lutheran Parish, Christmas for Kids, and Lutheran World Relief. God of grace. Your creation groans as it suffers the impact of pollution and lack of care. As the seasons change, renew in us the will to protect plants, animals, and habitats. Bless us with bountiful harvests that all may share. Bless all the newly baptized, especially Rebbe. God of grace. Your world is shattered and the nations rage. Remember us in your mercy. Teach wisdom to our elected leaders so that we know peace in our world, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. Watch over those serving overseas, especially Kelsey. God of grace. Your children wander homeless and the hungry cry for bread. Seek out those who are lost or lonely, anxious or depressed, or struggling with addiction or illness. Provide for those in need, especially Jim, Steve, Peter, Shirley, Doris, Shirley, Alice, Jane, George, Paul, Fran, Terry, Kathy, Dick, Judy, Irma, Jim, Porter, Marilyn, Dana, Mona, Deb, Scott, Braden, Ruth, Gary, Lisa, Loretta, Elizabeth, Sarah, Retta, Tim, Savannah, Samantha, Lewis, Tom, Harlan, Karen, Dave, and Jamie and all the victims of disasters and violence and war and those impacted by our pandemic in any way. God of grace. Your work is done in this congregation with our hands, feet, voices, minds, and hearts. Build up the ministries of this community that we serve our neighbors and welcome the stranger in your name. God of grace. Your blessed saints who have died now rest in your presence. Give us thankful hearts for those who have been examples of faith in our lives and receive us with joy when we come to share eternal life with you. Comfort the grieving families of Woody Woods and the 9-11 victims. God of grace. Gather together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit Gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please be seated for our offering.
Let us pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ who sets the table for all. Amen. Our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join there in ending him. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Christ invites you to this table. Come, taste, and see.
God of abundant table. You have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This time we'll have a temple talk uh, on stewardship. Good morning. Good morning. On behalf of the stewardship committee, I would like to announce the start of this year's stewardship campaign. And the theme of it this year is make it simple. Make it simple, obviously, as a theme, maybe certainly seems countercultural to what uh, America is like today. We are told via mass messaging, whether advertisement or social media, every day that what we have is inadequate. As Pastor Gene relayed, though, in his sermon last week, much of this messaging <clears throat> is counter to the beliefs of the church. How much is enough? Those are the things that we plan to explore in the coming weeks. And also to be clear, a stewardship campaign is not only about finances. So many of you give very freely what is maybe an even more valuable commodity, your time. And the competition for that has never been greater either. So join us as we examine these things in October and cap it off with Commitment Sunday on November 6th. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Kids and all others that would like to celebrate or just like celebrating things, next Sunday, September 18th, is Rally Sunday. Mark your calendar. If you haven't already, kids pre-K through fifth grade will register for Sunday school at 1015 in the Sunday school room. All ages are invited to bring an item for brunch at 1030 in the fellowship hall. So this is a family and whole congregation event. After eating, kids will participate in fun games that all are invited to watch and cheer on. We do have a sign-up sheet that you'll find by the penny prayer jar to bring breakfast items to share. Sunday school begins September 25th. This is held downstairs from 1015 to 1115 every Sunday after worship. A confirmation gathering will be held Sunday, October 9th at 1040 in the sanctuary for students and parents. St. Matthew's Saintly Spaghetti Supper will be Saturday, September 24th from 4.30 to 7 p.m. Benefits going to Braveheart Children's Advocacy Center. Dinner prices are $8 per person, $6 for children's ages 12 and under, ages 3 and under eat for free. Carryouts, also known as drive through will be available. We are also selling raffle tickets for a drawing for the items displayed in the hall. If you did not notice, walking through the hallway this morning, there are lots and lots of different items, so check those out. We are selling raffle tickets starting today. These also go to support Braveheart. Tickets are $1 each or $5 for six tickets. A drawing will be held the evening of the supper. We are also in need of volunteers of all ages to help with setting up, serving, directing traffic, cleanup, and for our finger-sized desserts. A sign-up sheet can be found in the hallway, so we'll have people standing out, um, kind of directing you, helping you find those sign-up sheets. And I want to just give a shout out. We have all our beef, you guys, for our spaghetti supper. I'm so excited. Okay. <laughs> Bell Choir will begin practicing beginning Wednesday, September 14th at 5.30. Adult Choir will begin practicing also Wednesday, September 14th at 6.30. We would still love to have some new voices and bell ringers. You can see Megan Olson or, heck, just show up on that day and time if you are interested. Everyone is invited to join us after Sunday worship for coffee and fellowship in the share room. And don't forget, 
to check out that rally day and spaghetti supper breakfast sign up sheet. Oh, sorry, the rally day is breakfast, spaghetti supper sign up sheets in the hallway. Woo! All right, thank you. As Abel, I invite you to stand. Look up and hear the good news of God's blessings for you. May God, who gives life to all things and frees us from hopelessness, bless you with truth and peace. And may God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Our sending hymn is number 676. Lord, speak to us that we may speak. <coughs> Now go in peace with Christ beside you. Thank you. Thank you.